Hi everyone, I'm Priya Mystery, the TMJ doc. And in today's video, we're going to explore something I get asked about all the time. How are my eye problems possibly related to my joint issues? If you're experiencing blurred vision, pain or pressure behind the eyes, eye twitching, watering, or even changes in how your eyes focus or track movement, and if you also have TMJ issues, then this video, my friends, is for you. By the end of this video, you're going to understand exactly how your TMJ problems may be affecting your eyes, and more importantly, what you can do about it. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a general dentist with a practice in Vancouver, Washington, where we are dedicated to taking care of those with TMJ disorders. My entire practice is focused on helping people who are struggling with TMJ, TMD, and all of the uncomfortable, confusing, and often debilitating symptoms that come with it. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It really helps push these videos to reach people who need them the most. And if you find this video helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. I love hearing from you guys and I will definitely respond to all of your comments. Okay, so let's get into it. How can a jaw problem affect the eyes? That might seem impossible. And if it sounds strange to you, you're definitely not alone. But once we break down the anatomy, neurology, and function of the jaw and how it relates to the eyes, this will all start to make sense. Let's start with the anatomy. Your TMJ, your temporomandibular joint, your jaw joint, is the joint that connects your lower jaw, this jawbone here, the mandible, to the temporal bone of your skull. It is also known as the jaw joint. You have two jaw joints, one on your left side and one on your right side. The jaw joints are located just in front of both of your ears and are surrounded by muscles, nerves, ligaments, and other such fun structures. Now here's where it gets interesting. One of the most important nerves in your entire head is located in this area and it's called the trigeminal nerve. This nerve has three branches, the ophthalmic branch, which goes to your eyes, forehead, and upper face, the maxillary branch, which goes to your cheeks, upper lip, and nose, and the mandibular branch, which controls your jaw and chewing muscles. The trigeminal nerve, also known as cranial nerve five, is responsible for both sensory and motor functions in the face. It provides sensation to most of the face, including the forehead, the cheeks, the nose, the upper jaw, the maxillary area, and the lower jaw. It also controls the muscles involved in chewing, in mastication. So when your TMJ, your jaw joint, is out of alignment or your jaw muscles are tight and inflamed, then all of that can actually put pressure on that trigeminal nerve. And if there's pressure on the trigeminal nerve, the ophthalmic branch of the nerve could also be affected, leading to symptoms in and around the eyes. So this means that a jaw problem can irritate a nerve that goes to your eyes. This is especially relevant when you consider the close proximity of the jaw joint to the base of the skull where the trigeminal nerve originates. Even mild inflammation in this region can lead to a cascade of irritation and dysfunction in the nerve's branches, resulting in a range of eye symptoms like eye pain, pressure or pain around or behind the eyes, or even eye twitching or eye watering. Here's what I've seen firsthand in my patients. Pain and pressure behind or around the eyes. This usually improves within the first month of starting treatment with me. Eye twitching. This also usually goes away within a month, maybe two months of starting treatment. Blurred vision. This one's tricky. This one takes a little bit longer to improve, usually a few months and sometimes requires co-treatment or coordination with a neural optometrist who may need to prescribe prism lenses for the patient to wear. Migraines and migraine auras. Once we get the jaw inflammation down, these migraine-related visual symptoms reduce dramatically, usually within two to four months of starting treatment. Now, I haven't personally seen eye floaters, and I get that question a lot, are eye floaters related to this? And I haven't had any cases with rapid eye blinking either, but that doesn't mean they're not connected to jaw problems. It just means I haven't seen it yet, right? It's also worth noting that some of these visual disturbances like migraine auras or eye pain are not just annoying, they can be terrifying for patients. When people experience flashing lights, zigzag lines or pressure behind their eyes, 
Their first fear is that something is seriously wrong with their vision or their brain. That's scary. But what many people don't realize is, is that TMJ, TMD can be the underlying cause. And when we treat the jaw problems, these eye symptoms can drastically improve. Now let's talk about the sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone, in my opinion, is the most amazing bone in the human body. And here's why. It connects with so many other bones in your skull. There's so many muscular attachments onto it. There's so many nerves that run through it. It's just a really amazing bone. <laughs> and on top of that, it helps to form some of the orbit. The orbit is a collection of seven bones in the skull, which form together. And the orbit is where the eye and associated structures are situated. Attached to the sphenoid bone are two muscles that are major troublemakers when it comes to TMJ, TMD. These are the medial pterygoid muscle and the lateral pterygoid muscle. The lateral pterygoid muscle is really the big troublemaker in my experience. When either of these pterygoid muscles are in dysfunction, spasm or pain, which is common in TMJ disorders, they can affect the orientation of the sphenoid bone in space. And if the sphenoid bone is not in the optimal position or alignment, the orientation and function of the eyes within the skull can also be affected because again, the sphenoid helps to make up the orbit, which houses the eyeball. This means things like eye tracking, eye focusing, and even how your eyes sit in the socket can feel misaligned or dysfunctional. The orientation of the sphenoid bone also affects how your entire cranial system functions. Since this bone serves as a key part of the skull, a misalignment can create a ripple effect. That includes compression of any of the 12 cranial nerves and changes in how your visual system is supported, both structurally and neurologically. The connection between the sphenoid bone, the eyes, and the jaw joints is very important and is one of the key reasons why eye symptoms and TMJ, TMD symptoms often show up together. Let's talk about how we treat these TMJ, TMD symptoms and how the same treatment helps with eye-related symptoms. So the first thing I typically do for my patients is I make a custom TMJ orthotic. This is not a regular night guard, mouth guard, or a splint. This is a precisely fabricated oral appliance that holds the jaw in a neutral and decompressed position. By decompressing the jaw and getting the jaw muscles into the correct resting length, we take pressure off of the jaw joints, the facial muscles, the nerves, including that trigeminal nerve. This decompression helps the entire head and neck system function more harmoniously and much more optimally. It also gives the articular disc inside the jaw joints an opportunity to return to correct alignment and function especially if it's displaced or dislocated. This is a huge deal. When the little disc inside the jaw joint is out of position, it can cause the jaw to lock closed or click or pop. But what most people don't realize is that this mechanical dysfunction can also create inflammation that radiates into the head and even affects visual function. Next, we do myofascial release. This is a therapy where I apply gentle but sustained pressure to the muscles and the fascia of the head, face, neck, and jaw. Myofascial release helps to break up tight muscle fibers, improve blood flow, bring in fresh oxygen and nutrients to these angry inflamed muscles or to the angry inflamed fascia. Myofascial release also helps to flush out built up toxins and lactic acid. And yes, it can be a little painful, maybe even more than a little for patients. But my patients usually say it hurts so good, and many patients ask me to actually press harder. Additionally, they say it hurts now, but it feels way better later. So go ahead and do what you need to. So the release of tension in these tight muscles, tight constricted fascia can lead to immediate pain relief, better posture, better alignment of the jaw, increased range of motion, and yes, my friends, you guessed it, reduced pain and pressure around the eyes. It also helps to stimulate the flow of lymphatic fluid, which can eliminate waste products from overworked muscles and tissues. Many patients are surprised to find that this kind of work also reduces feelings of facial fullness, pressure in the sinuses, and even eye tension and headaches. Finally, we do manual jaw manipulation. This is a technique I learned from my mentor, Dr. Arthur Parker, who developed it over several decades of successfully treating thousands of TMJ-TMD patients. 
It's incredibly powerful and it helps to realign the jaw, relieve tension in deep muscles, and decompress the joints manually. This technique is especially helpful for patients who are experiencing eye pressure, pain, tension headaches that seem to radiate around the eyes or the forehead. And this is also really helpful for those patients who are locked closed, where you can barely open more than one or two finger widths. I usually do this osteopathic manual job manipulation in conjunction with myofascial release during follow-up appointments. It is subtle and gentle, and it works very effectively. In addition to orthotics, myofascial release, and jaw manipulation, that's one way I treat. The other way that I treat this is DTR, Disclusion Time Reduction Therapy. To find out more information about DTR, my second method of treatment, please watch the video linked above and below. So why does all this work? It works because we're restoring the correct alignment and function of the entire jaw system. And the jaw is directly linked to the eyes through muscles, bones, and especially nerves. Think of it this way. The jaw is not an isolated structure. It is part of a complex network that includes the face, the neck, the head, and the eyes. When there's dysfunction, inflammation, or tension in one part of that network, other parts can compensate or suffer. That's why so many people experience eye symptoms in conjunction with TMJ, TMD. When you look at the system holistically, when you look at everything together, it makes complete sense. By relaxing the orofacial muscles, decompressing the jaw joints, and improving posture and blood flow, we're giving the entire craniofacial region a chance to function optimally and harmoniously. Now let's talk science. Now I want to nerd out with you for a minute. Multiple studies have shown that people with TMJ, TMD perform worse on vision tests that involve convergence, which means bringing the eyes together to focus, and accommodation, which means shifting focus from near to far, near to far. <laughs> there are also links between TMJ, TMD, and conditions like astigmatism, myopia, which is nearsightedness, hypermetropia, which is farsightedness, strabismus, which is crossed eyes, and one study even found that changes in your mandibular position, the way your jaw sits, can alter visual capacities. That means that your bite could be affecting how well your eyes work together. Amazing, right? And this might sound impossible, but I've seen it day in and day out in my seven years of solely treating TMJ, TMD. There are even more useful studies. Migraine research shows a strong connection between TMJ, TMD, and visual symptoms like visual auras, light sensitivity, also called photophobia, eye pain. So when we calm down the jaw and chewing muscles and optimize the function of the TMJ system, we see fewer migraines, and as a result, visual symptoms improve too. So what should you do if you have any of these symptoms? If you have TMJ, TMD, and eye symptoms, please do not ignore them. There is a connection between the two and I see it regularly at my practice. Here's what you can do. Find a TMJ dentist who uses orthotics and manual therapy, not just a basic night guard. Get evaluated by an optometrist or eye doctor who understands the musculoskeletal system and the nervous system. Consider prism lenses if you're dealing with focusing or convergence issues. Pay attention to your posture and screen time. The use of computers, laptops, smartphones, tablets, and other screen devices is a big contributing factor in both TMJ, TMD, and eye strain. Don't be afraid to explore multidisciplinary care. A team approach involving your dentist, physical therapist, and eye doctor can make a big difference in your condition and health. In summary, so let me wrap this up. TMJ, TMD can absolutely cause or contribute to eye problems. The connection is real, and it's caused by anatomy, shared muscles and bones. It's caused by neurology, the trigeminal nerve. It's caused by function, how the jaw and eye muscles work together. In my practice, I've seen eye pressure improve within a month of starting treatment. Blurred vision reduced in two to four months, and migraines with auras decreased dramatically within one or two months. And this is all with the treatment methods I've already described in this video. So if you or someone you love is struggling with both TMJ, TMD, and eye issues, I hope this video has given you some hope and some clarity. I'm Dr. Priya Mystery, and I'm so grateful you watched this video until the end. Please hit the like button, share this video with someone who needs it, and drop your comments or questions below. I will personally respond to every single comment.
Take care and I'll see you in the next video. And remember my friends, you can never have TMI about TMJ. Thank you.